Good afternoon, Saints. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Praise God. 2021. We're going to pick up today. We started this new series last week. Lord, increase our faith. Praise God. And that's found in Luke 17, chapter 5th verse. Let us pray. Father, thank you for a new year. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for keeping us and watching over us and guard and send your angels to guard us and send your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we, you will give us mercy here today and so that we can open up our heart and drop all our guards that we've been holding up here, um, been resisting your word. We want to drop all our guards and receive your word with all joy and all gladness. And we thank you for that. Lord, and Father God, I ask that you will bring everything to my remembrance. I'm just one of your people you use to teach your word and to expound on your word and to feed your sheep. And I pray that you will bring everything to my remembrance, all others and all the things that you would have me to say. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Luke, the 17th chapter, the 5th verse. This is how the Amplified. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith, our ability to confidently trust in God and in his power. Increase our faith. That's what he said. Increase our faith. The sixth verse, and the Lord said, if you have confident, abiding faith in God, and I'm going to stop right there, he said, if you have, and out of King James, the Lord said, if you had faith, he's talking to you and he's talking to me. A lot of people say, Lord, if you could just increase my faith, I could have faith enough to believe for healing. I could have faith enough to believe for getting my bills paid. I would have faith enough to uh, trust you that you're going to save all my children, all my family, all my friends and relatives. If you just could increase my faith. And the Lord is saying here, if you have faith. And that, that faith is in him. And trust is in him. Well, here's what F.F. F. Bosworth wrote in his book, Christ the Healer. Faith begins where the will of God is not. That's what he quoted. That's a quote from his book. And we need to get, y'all need to get that book, uh, Christ the Healer. It's a good book, just like the one we got led by the Spirit, by uh, Brother Hagin. I, I see what you're saying. All those are helps. The only way he had that, he really had to believe and have faith in Jesus Christ died for him on the cross. And he accepted him before as your Lord and Savior. Well, That's right. we have to know what the, it's his will for us to be saved. His will is for us to do just what he A lot of people. Here's the problem in the world we live in right now in this dispensation, in this year 2021. You have millions that only don't even believe in God. They don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in none of that stuff. They think it's a myth. They think this Bible is just a something that man came up with to keep them in bondage. And they don't realize we're going to talk about it, who's really got them in bondage. Let's look at a few of these verses about the will of God. In Mark, the third chapter, can you turn there with me, please? Talking about, let's talk about the will of God for a minute. So we can get, know where we're headed here today. This is Mark, the third chapter, the 35th verse. This is Jesus talking here. 
It actually starts at verse uh, 31. I'm going to read out King James. It says, because they said, no, that's 30. Uh, 31 says, there came then his brother and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him, and the multitude set about him, and they said unto him, Behold, my mother, thy mother and thy brother without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother and my brother? And he looked around about on them which set about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brother. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whosoever shall do the will of God. What does it say in God in your amplified? Those same verses. Well, yeah, you can read it. We got enough time here. I didn't start the timer, but we can. Then his this. mother and his brother arrived. And standing outside, they sent word to him and called to him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. Mm -hmm. Looking at those who were sitting in a circle around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God by believing in me, and following me, he is my brother and my sister and my mother. Mm -hmm. So it is we have to do those things. Well, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, you have to be born again, right? And then God takes you. Well, it says, uh, God then to take over him. believing in me in the Amplified, mm -hmm. and it says, for whosoever shall do the will of God. The same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Mm -hmm. So it says in Amplified, and whosoever yeah. doeth the will of God. You can't do the will of God unless you believe the will of God. But that's what it says. And the will of God, to know how to know the will of God, you have to read your Bible and you have to be quick to believe. Quick to repent and quick to do what he says to. Slow to speak. Well, it shouldn't be no speaking in That's there. That's what I'm saying. It shouldn't be nothing. Let's look at another verse here in Romans, the eighth chapter. Amen. We're going to go right through this pretty quick so we can know what some right. what the Word of God says about the will of God. Amen. Right. Romans, the eighth chapter. Read it out and amplify it. Verses 26 and 27. It says, I'm going to read out of King James. And it says, And he that searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit knows. Let me read this here. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because it maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. There's the will of God. He makes intercessions according to the will of God. Amen? That's the 27th verse. If you jump to the 26th verse, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself making intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit, if you're praying to God, he can make them intercessions for you according to the will of God. Because we don't even know what we should be praying for sometimes. That's all we have to be born. Amen. Now go with me to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. 
there, there was multiple verses about this when I was researching this, the will of God. There is a whole lot said about the will of God. And it's all in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. The sixth verse, it says, Not with eye service as man pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Now, Amplified says, Not in the way of eye service, working only when someone is watching you, and only to please man. Mm -hmm. But as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Now, we've all been caught up in that. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to work some days and you just don't feel like working. Mm -hmm. But you'll see the boss come on the floor and then you'll start working. Mm -hmm. So, you're doing it so that he can see you working. Mm -hmm. When you know in your heart you haven't been working. God said, don't do that. He says, well, you know, do it from your heart. That's what he's saying here. Doing the will of God from your heart. And the Amplified says, but as slaves of Christ. Some people say, well, I'm not a slave. You're either with Christ in his kingdom or you with Satan in his kingdom. Right? right. That's the this is just, this is just part of the will of God. It said it says not in a way of eye service, working only when someone is watching you. Go ahead. And, and God is like that. It, it don't even have to have nothing to do with the boss. I would be doing things, and the Lord said, "Do what's on reason to be doing it because you know I'm looking at you." He said, "You know I'm watching you." He said, "But." In your spirit, I can tell you, you really don't want to do it. Amen. And, and then he said, you need to repent of that. Mm -hmm. Because he can, he reads my thoughts and everything. And I, and I be doing things sometimes there. I know he's looking at me. And he, <laughs> Let's look at a few <laughs> more of these uh, verses uh, about the will of God in our life. Let's look at a few more of these verses about the will of God. Uh, First Thessalonians. The fourth chapter. You want us to just do it. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter. All right. I get reprimanded for that. You know, I just, well, you know what I do teach you is I ask God, Lord, teach me really how, how to really love. You know, Here's what it says for uh, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the third verse. Okay. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Mm -hmm. That's the will of God. Your sanctification. In the world we live in now, <laughs> people have skipped all over this verse. And here's the whole thing that we have to look at. God is writing to saints in these epistles. Paul is writing to saints. Mm -hmm. These are the saints at Thessalonica. And he stands for them to, you should abstain from fornication. That means you got to pull yourself back from fornication. Fornication is when two unmarried people are having sexual relationships, which our world we live in says nothing is wrong with that. And Paul said it shouldn't be in the church, but yet it is in the church because the divorce rate in the church is almost, I think it's higher than the divorce rate in the world. He said that we should abstain from that. I mean, you got to control yourself. That's but, the will of God. Can I ask you something? Well, it's in four because this man... So you're doing the will of God and it's, and you know it's that it pleases and gratifies God. If we do his will. We're not robot. God loves us and we show him our love and obedience by doing by doing his will. We're not just doing it because like you say we're gonna get paid for it. It's because of our love. Well faith 
begins. Like, let me give you this quote again by F.F. F. Bosworth. It says, faith begins where the will of God is known. Mm -hmm. So you can have faith to abstain, you know, to restrain yourself from doing that because you know it's not the will of God that you should do that, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't know that it's not the will of God, you'll just do it. Say, you know, I got a right to believe whatever I want to, but no, you don't. When you're, a, say, you're a Christian, you're supposed to believe what the Word of God says. Be quick to believe, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry, <laughs> you know? Because God, is, you know, when he tells you something, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be quick to hear that. And the reason I say this, Tristan says that it's in James, slow to speak, because what God is telling you is right. Mm -hmm. He don't need to hear from you anymore. You don't want to hear okay, let's look at the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. You know... Jesus wants us to have faith in God. Jesus wants us to have faith in God. Now, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Thank you, Lord, for your holy, holy word. I think it would do us some. Now, the, the verse 18 says in this fifth chapter, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But I think it would help us, our faith to increase, to go back to the 14th verse and read down to the 24th verse out of the Amplified. Yeah, 14 to 24 out of the Amplified. Read it nice and loud and clear so that our viewers and everybody can follow along. We earnestly urge believers, admonish those who are out of line, undisciplined, the unruly, the disorderly, encourage the timid who lack spiritual courage. Help the spiritually weak. Be very patient with everyone, always controlling your temper. Mm -hmm. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies, spoken revelations, words of instruction or exhortation or warnings. Be test, but test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good. Hold firmly to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil withdraw and keep away from it. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is separate you from profane and vulgar things. Make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and the soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithfully and absolutely trustworthy is he who is calling you to himself for your salvation, and he will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy, guarding you, watching over you, and protecting you as his 
his home. So he said here in this 18th verse, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful. <laughs> and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Now, that helped me a lot because there are a lot of things happening once you leave your house. Amen. Especially that one that cuts you off in traffic and almost makes you an accident. Or when you get to work and you get ready to pull in a parking place and somebody zips in before you. And once you get at work, they're giving you something that you never did before and you don't know nothing about it. And you don't have nobody there to help you. Then you leave work and you get home and everything is out of order. You look at the mail you have a lot of kids. And there's a big bill that you didn't think was coming, or some letter from somebody that you don't even know, and they're saying um, this and that. God is saying, in all these circumstances, give thanks, be thankful. This is the will of God. You're, you're being thankful to Him. That's the will of God. That's what you're being thankful for. Because what I have found out in these circumstances that have popped up in my life, I say, thank you, God. And the minute I thank God for it, it goes away. He takes care of it. The minute I start complaining, the de I get the devil place. And he starts kicking it up more. Because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. So if you let anger get in there, anything. Well, that's evil. Like it said here. That's evil. You know, stay away from evil things. Well, like what we read though in Genesis verse 4, no, uh, and, um, and the upper verses where it was just saying that we are to encourage one another. You know, you don't want to just be all of some of like that because they do. We can encourage them and love one. Right. And when we do that through the Holy Spirit, the person will may not get upset with you. They'll be right. responsive. Right. So well, that's here's what the word God says. God's will is the love. Oh, it's, 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 and to do things in the love and can't seek the best for one another. In this 17th chapter of Luke. I don't like being beat up on my either. The apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. This is the 17th chapter of Luke, the 5th verse. It says, and the, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the roots, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Our words have power. This is why the devil tries to get you to say the wrong thing. And a lot of times we've been saying the wrong thing for years and years because we haven't known what the will of God was for us in our life. Romans 12.2, let's stop by here. Now Jesus said that if we have faith just as a grain of a mustard seed, that's a real small seed. If we just had that, faith is powerful. You have that much faith in him. Right. Because you know the mustard seeds, I understand, it grows to be... Well, a lot of people say, I have faith, but it's in their self. Yeah, that's right. That's where it's being. Right. They even say, I let myself down. This is why it says in Mark, the 11th chapter, the 22nd verse, have faith in God. It continues right. constantly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at Romans, the 12th chapter here. 
Uh, read from verse 1 to 8. You won't tell us a lot here. Well, that, uh, read from Romans uh, 1 to 3. Because we have other places we got to go today. Oh. I'll read from the answer, Tommy. <laughs> I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well pleasing to God which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world that this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transferred, transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves, yourself, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. For by the grace which is the unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought, which is not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. So we got that must receive faith. We do. But he also tells you what the will of God is. In the second verse here, he tells you what the will of God is. He says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with his superficial values and customs. Mm -hmm. Do not conform to it. Mm -hmm. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind. You got to renew your mind. And focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself. You're not proving this to, for anybody else. You're proving it for yourself. What the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect, his plan and per purpose for you. That's the will of God. First John, the second chapter, See how this all goes together, how the Lord is going to tell us something here today. Because we have been ran amok. Everybody in this room, me included. And 1 John, the second chapter, praise God for your word. You got his word. Verses 15 through 17 reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Give me them three verses I've amplified. Do, do not love the world of sin that opposes God and his precepts, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust and the sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and longing of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence, and one's 
resources or in stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world. The world is passing away, and with it, its lusts and shameful pursuits and ungodly longings, but the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes lives forever. Okay, now read verses 20 and 21 out of the same chapter. But you have been anointed by you, which is you hold a sacred appointment from, you have been given an option from the Holy One, and you all know the truth, or you know all things. I write to you not because you are ignorant and do not perceive and know the truth, but because you do perceive and know it, and know positively that nothing false, no deception, and no lie is of the truth. All right. Now the King James it says, but you have an option from the Holy One and you know all things. You know all things. For I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. So, God has told us two things here right now. To know the will of God for you and your life is to know the word of God. That's what you got to know. And then he tells you that you have the spirit within you but to tell you what is true. And I like the way it puts it out here in the uh, You know, the one translation, it says, uh, it out of this amplified, it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted, and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our mind, and guards us from error. Yeah. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Even, even when you, you may not, like you say, you get to work and you don't know what to do, He'll tell you what to do. Okay, here's the problem. If you don't, you, you can know the answer, you know, what the will of God is for you in your life. Mm -hmm. You can know this by the Word of God. Yeah. And by the, the Holy Spirit that is in you. Mm -hmm. But we're saying, Lord, increase our faith. So we need more of the Word of God. To increase our faith. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. So if we want our faith to increase, we need to get more of the word of God in us. Well, we need to hear it. Yeah. Well, here's some. Um, you know, and it uh, increases your trust in well, In Romans, I'm gonna, here's Romans the way I'm reading out of the, 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 uh, the Amplified 10 17. Romans 10, it says, so faith comes from hearing what is told. Mm -hmm. And what is heard comes from the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Mm -hmm. Not concerning anybody else, but concerning Christ. So here's what we have to start doing. Uh, go to the fourth chapter of First John. We're going to break it down here in these last few minutes and we're going to make it plain mm -hmm. so that we can meditate on this until we get back in the Word of God. Because all this is fitting together with what we're teaching on Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. yeah, now, wait, where were you going again? Uh, fourth chapter, first yeah. John, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read out of King James. It says, Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many 
false prophets have gone out into the world. The Amplified says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Instead, test the spirit to see whether they are from God because many false prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. And see, this is one thing that the saints haven't been doing. Most of our saints are really gullible. They're just ready to gobble up everything that is coming from a teacher or a preacher instead of, you know, wait a minute, let me test this and see if it is from God. And this is one thing that you need to do this year, is start testing everything that you hear to see if it's from God. That, that includes me, what's coming from my mouth or anybody else's mouth, because you have the Word of God and you have the Holy Spirit in you to, to tell if it's lining up with what God is saying. Amen. And plus, you know a little bit about the word of the will of God. Right? Mm -hmm. right. Go ahead, Mr. And, um, and what you're saying, we didn't get to it, is in um, 1 John 2, 27. It says, in the Amplified, it says, But as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction, which you receive from him, abides permanently in you, so then you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and no falsehood, so you must abide in, live in, never depart from him, mm -hmm. being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. And now little children abide, live, remain permanently in him, so that when he is made visible, we may have and enjoy perfect confidence, boldness, assurance, and not be ashamed and shrink from him at his time. But that 27 is what you were saying. Yeah, see. We have to stay in the word of God. Yeah. Here's what it says out of the, yeah. uh, the King James. Mm -hmm. but, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, mm -hmm. and ye need no one, no, you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as he has taught you, you should abide. You can't take that one verse. Jesus told us this and when he was tempted But no, I was going along with the verses you have read already. Right. What he's saying that you have the Holy Spirit in you mm -hmm. to teach you. Mm -hmm. But in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, mm -hmm. he said he gave us a five-fold ministry yeah. to build us up and help us. Mm -hmm. so let's take a look at this. Because this is what has happened to us. See, somebody will take that verse and say, well, I don't need no man to teach me nothing. But that's not what they're saying. Right? I know, but that's how they take that's it out of context. No, I was just going along with what you were saying. We had already read right. the one. But right. here's what it says in uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, because a lot of people, see, they're listening to this. They say, well, why am I listening to them? Here's why you need to listen to your, your pastors and teachers and all of that. It says in the fourth chapter, the 11th verse, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statutes of the fullness of Christ, that we therefore be not, be not, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every whim of doctrine by the seed of men and cunningly craftiness 
whereby they lay in wait to deceive. That's why he put these ministers in order. But here in 1 John, he says, Beloved, but leave not every spirit. Because we have a spirit. God is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. His little cohorts are a spirit. So that's why he said you have to test these spirits to see if they are of God. And you test these spirits by the word of God. Amen? Amen. That's exactly what he said. But like I said, we as saints have been so gullible in believing everything that's been coming from the pulpit and from, you know, many teachers that wasn't never ordained to preach or teach anyway. Right. And then let's face it, a lot of things people are come to by appearance. It appears to be. Well, here's what happens. Here's what's going to happen. Because they may not be reading themselves. They're listening to what? Most people don't even take a Bible to church. But I'm saying they're going by vision. They're looking at people's documentation of what they get behind the name. They adopted this or adopted that. That don't mean that they've been born again. If you got a minute, if you got a minute, let's go on with this because there's something that you need to see here. Uh, Proverbs, the 14th chapter. We're not supposed to just believe everything we hear. Not everything we see. Because what appears to be isn't always so. Well, we're supposed to be led by the Spirit, not that's, by the flesh. That's what I'm saying. But people are led by We're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. That's right. That's how all that comes in. In Proverbs, the 14th chapter, the 15th verse. Now, in King James, it says, The simple believes every word. But the prudent man looks well to his corn. Read that out in the flag. Proverbs, the 14th chapter. Oh, I put four. I had to go four to it first. Oh, it's 14, 15. Yeah, read that out in the flag. It says. information on this. In the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, Paul, well, the Holy Spirit, I should say, put this in here, especially for us, 1711, uh, 17th chapter of Acts, the 11th verse, it says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you have to read your chapter every day? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, you know, when somebody's teaching you or, or talking to you or preaching to you or, or whatever situation you're in, you don't have to make a comment on it all the way. Right. You just write it down. You say, okay, that sounds good. I'll check it out when I get home. But you notice what the, the one reason they did this is because they, they had their, uh, they knew they had salvation in Christ and they put their faith in Christ. So well, bring that out of the side because that's where you're picking up all of that. Yeah, well, this is where you're out. picking it up. Bring it out of It says, now these people were more noble and open minded than those in Thessalonica. So they 
receive the message of salvation through faith in the Christ with eagerness and examine the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. So you had the Holy Spirit and you had the scriptures to right. see if whatever somebody's telling you if it lies right. up. And we have been deceived in many areas of our life. And they and they was um, eager. Right. Um, we're we're been deceived in many areas of our life. Yeah. By saying. By not trying things right. or testing them. And many go to First Timothy four one. Let's see what the Paul wrote to Timothy. First Timothy four one. Let's see what the Paul by the Spirit of God writes here. You know, 1 Timothy tells us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is deep. Deeper than what I, I thought it was. It says here in the first, fourth chapter, the first verse, this is 1 Timothy 4 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Yeah. That's what it is, demons. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what it's saying here. Read on. Read from that first verse down through, because we looked at these verses, six through eight. Read verses one through eight out of the Amplified. Okay. But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that at latter times some will turn away from the faith giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach through their hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared by cauterizers cut off, mm -hmm. who forbid people to marry and teach them to abstain from certain kinds of food mm -hmm. which God created to be received with thanksgiving mm -hmm. by those who believe and have an increasingly clear knowledge of them. For everything God has created is good, and nothing is to be thrown away or refused if it is received with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. For it is hallowed and consecrated by the word of God and by prayer. If you lay all these instructions before the brethren, you will be a worthy steward and a good minister of Christ Jesus. Ever nourishing your own self. That's for the shepherds as well. Mm -hmm. Your own self on the truth of the faith and of the good Christian instructions which you have closely followed. But refuse and avoid of reverent legends, profane and impure and godless fictions, mere, their mere grandmother's tales, and silly myths, mm. and express your dis and express your disapproval of them. Because mm. how are we going to help somebody if we want to be quiet? Train yourself toward godliness, piety though, Keeping yourselves spiritually fit. For physical training is of some value, useful for love. But godliness, spiritual training, is useful and of value in everything and in every way. For it holds promise for the present life and also for the life which is to come. And this is real sad because to know that's one thing about the word of God as we continue to read and study it we'll see just how the truth is in it but not to condemn anyone but it's still so grievous when well here's what the word reading says. here how people do turn away from the Second faith Corinthians. get involved in other religions now sin Corinthians is real full sad. of this kind of stuff yeah. that we just where we're headed real to sad. Talking about because we want the Lord to increase our faith in Him, not in the world, not in the world system, not in no man, not in the man's doctrine or anything else. 
Now here's one thing that you Praise got to God. know. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. That's what happens to people. Yeah, yeah. But we are to live in a loving but true manner so that maybe they can change their, their heart. They can change their you can love somebody and still not trust them. That's you know, where that's where we have started with somebody who knows that. But the <laughs> that is reason God wants you. Yes, that's a okay, doubt. We got a few minutes it's here, and I'm going to get these right. these couple of verses into your spirit. Second Corinthians two eleven. Here's what it says. Two eleven. It says, "Lest Satan should get an advantage of us." For we are not ignorant of his devices. Are you in First Corinthians? Second Corinthians, the second chapter, the eleventh verse. We'll read it on Amplified. Satan from taking advantage of us. I don't have that here at all. I'm in the wrong book of what? Second Corinthians. I keep looking at two, but I'm looking at chapter two, but not mm -hmm. second. Yes, yeah, Second Corinthians. Um, read that in that verse that are yours, and then when you're done with that, go to the other chapter. To keep. You don't want to read the one before. Okay, well. Well, if you want to, you can read it. Yeah. And 10 says, if you forgive anyone anything, I too forgive that one. Of what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything. As for your sake, in the presence with the approval of Christ the Messiah, which is to keep Satan from getting an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his wiles and intentions. Amen. Now come with me to the eleventh chapter. Praise God for your word. I'm going to read the fourteenth verse, but this actually. It goes from 12 to 15. I'm going to read out of King James. It says, And no marvel, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. When you're looking for the truth, just remember, that Satan ain't going to come to you with a pitchfork in a red suit. He's going to come to you as an angel of light. And it's going to sound good. It's going to look good. Taste good, smell good. He's working on you all your five physical senses. What you see here, touch, smell, and taste. He's going to be working on all of them. And plus... Satan has been around here so long that you cannot reason with him or none of his cohorts. They have been around here for millenniums. They have seen kingdoms rise and fall, and they've been part of the cause of it. Read the verses of 11 through 15. Let's put it in contents. Read that amplified. And you said all the senses of the Lord help you if you touch them. That's well, he knows how to do it. Yeah. Okay, 11 through 15. Why? It says, why? Because I do well, not love you. It says it started at um, 10, verse uh, 12. Okay, but I'm reading that. Yeah, just start at verse 12 and go down to 15 because we're going to have to close okay. up here. Okay. Right. But we're going we're to come back on this. Because we have been hoodwinked for so long and deceived and ran amok and just going every which way and not knowing what the will of God is for our life. And then we're turning around and say, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord has said, if you had faith in me, yeah. you wouldn't be ran amok. That means if you've got faith in Jesus, Jesus is the word. Jesus said, I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm -hmm. It is written. Mm -hmm. This is how Jesus dealt with the devil. The devil quoted in scripture that scripture was right. But Jesus said, it is also written. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, well, give me them verses. 
12 through 15. But what am I doing? I will keep doing. But what I am doing, I will keep doing. For I am determined to keep this independence in order to cut off the claim of those who want an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things they brag about. But such men are counterfeit apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. No wonder since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if this Servants are also masquerading as servants of righteousness, but their end will correspond, correspond excuse me, with their deeds. So what God is saying here, a lot of us have been just led astray mm -hmm. because we have believed what man is saying. And this man has camouflaged himself as an angel of light. And he's using all kinds of crafty words and, and all of that to get things from you that, in other words, he couldn't get from you. And also, a lot of touching and hurting was going on in the church all the time. Well, this why he told us to what the will of God is right. that we restrain from fortification. Right. You have to restrain from it. Yeah. Because you can get touched. And while you're getting touched, you're looking in somebody's eyes. Mm -hmm. And you also are smelling their fragrance. A lot of them be all up on you in church. And you also mm -hmm. are tasting mm -hmm. when you kiss. Right. Their perfume or cologne. So or everything is getting stimulated. They on you. It's getting stimulated. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the whole thing. What you need to know today that you have the Word of God and you have the Holy Spirit in you. That's right. To guide you into all truth. And you must know that everything you hear, you have to test it. Or see. You have to test what you hear from here on out, all the rest of this year. This is going to help you really overcome a lot of stuff. And plus, you can't be debating with Satan because you're not able to. You get tricked. Because what Satan says, <laughs> what he'll do, he'll lift you up in pride. You sure do look good. You smell good. Everything you do is pure. Get you lifted up in pride, and before you know it, it been on ran you a mock. We can't, the only way to deal with Satan is by the word of God, the same way Jesus done it in the wilderness when he was tempted 40 days. And this is what we do when somebody says something to us and it don't line up with the word of God, we have to quote the word of God. This is what is written. Well, that's all right. Just the. Well, it's going to hurt just to. That look. To do something, you know, just a little bit. Yeah. That's a little. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, all you have to do is just drop your pants. All I want to do is just look at it. That's all. I ain't going to touch it. I ain't going to do nothing else. Just drop your pants. All I want to do is just look at it. Right. All I want is a little and you don't know when you're pulling your pants down, you're getting excited already right. because somebody's going to look at it. Right. Because you're looking them in the eye and you're smelling how good they smell and they're smiling. Let me stop. Right. Father, thank you for what you have told us here today. Help and guide us into all your truth. Lord, increase our faith, faith in God. You say, if we had faith, the grain of a mustard seed. Lord, you said that you have given us a measure of faith. Everyone's got a measure of faith. 
Help us to develop that faith in you. Mm -hmm. Not in ourselves, not in our man, not in nothing else, but in you. Mm -hmm. Teach us how to walk and how to talk, because it says the just shall live by faith. And we know we are the just. We are your saints. We are your children. But we say children, we don't, we say that literally. Not just because the word God says we are children, but we know we are your little ones, your little children, and we just don't know everything. Teach us and lead us into all truth, and we'll be thankful because you have been merciful to us and you have had grace on us because by your mercy and by your grace that we're here, that we can develop more and learn more this 2021 20, year so that we can help others in the Word of God and guide them into all truth. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to turn it off here in a minute. Amen. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you.